Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. So over here in this area of the shop, I've had these two fluorescent fixtures and they've been out for a long, long time. So this area has been really dark. These fixtures are like the really cheap $10 ones you get at the home center. So I figured they'd be perfect for experimenting with converting them to LED fixtures from fluorescent. And I already did one. So you can see what a difference that makes. <laughs> so let me show you the process that I went through on the second one. So my first thought was to just convert these fixtures using these uh, replacement tubes. Uh, these ones happen to have a hundred LEDs in here and they're the same size as a regular fluorescent. All you have to do is modify the fixture to bypass the ballast and then this thing will work. It just takes AC directly into one of the ends. Now I'll show you in a little bit as I tear this thing apart why this isn't all that practical for this style of fixture, but basically it's a disposable fixture. Over here on this one, I already did this one for one of our indoor fixtures for our laundry room, just to see what that was like. And I can show you what that process looks like inside of here. So here we have the power coming in, and this used to run to the ballast, but you can see I've clipped those leads, and the wires coming out of the ballast are then dead, they don't really do anything. So these down here just become holders and not actually providing any power to the tubes. And then these, the hot and the neutral line, just get attached down to the other end to the other bulb holders and now provide direct AC current directly to the tubes. So you can see here, uh, I've used this, these two wires here for hot and then white for the neutral stays the same color coding because those are bridged together on that end. Also these, uh, these cheap fixtures are not fun to put, uh, take apart and put back together. And then with these, you just install the AC input side to the side that has the power actually running to it. So in my case, that is down there. And that works. So pretty simple process. Let me show you how I did these ones. So I have these LED light strips. They're just LEDs on an adhesive backing and you can stick these down wherever you want. You can make your own custom fixtures or put lights in all kinds of weird spots or whatever. They're pretty flexible and versatile. So I figured why not put these directly into the fixture and have basically an LED fixture just utilizing the physical fixture of the old thing I have here. So I'm gonna start taking this thing apart because I wanna get the power cord off of here because I wanna run the power for the LEDs through this hole here. And I'll also be able to show you why this is all the most, the most practical fixture to try and um, use those replacement tubes in. I'm just gonna cut the power cord off because I don't need it. And I'll make it a lot easier to get this clip off. So the reason this is way more difficult to modify to use one of the replacement tubes is because the ballast and the lamp holders are all integrated into one piece. So it's a lot harder to actually power these directly and bypass this ballast. I guess you could run uh, power directly to these prongs and power directly and try and uh, cut the leads on the circuit board or something. That seems a little bit more complicated for such a cheap fixture. So all I'm gonna do is stick the LED strips down inside the fixture to create my own custom fixture. And one of the th things that a lot of people complain about with these strips is the adhesive uh, losing grip after a while, mostly due to heat. Um, I'm hoping that since this is gonna be attached to a metal housing, the metal in the fixture is gonna help dissipate that heat and I'm not gonna have an issue with the adhesive coming off. Uh, you can always come back and glue it or just glue it now, but I'm kind of curious to see if using a metal housing makes a difference. So on the last one, I did four rows, down, back, down, and back. I'm gonna do that again.
Now these LED strips are labeled as pure white, which is a close color balance to the lights I already have, which are daylight, 6500K is what I have in my shop here at the fluorescence already. And when I get down to the end, instead of cutting them and having to solder a wire to connect them back together again, I'm just gonna loop them over on himself. Just to save me a little bit of a little bit of effort there. Now you can buy LED strips with varying levels of quality. The ones that I have here have a high color rendering index, which means they have they should have less of a strange color cast to them, or hopefully no strange color cast. They also cost more. <laughs> This roll of five meters is $25. And this will use almost the entire roll. And on the strips, there are these cut areas where you can cut, and there's some soldering pads there so you can attach multiple together or attach wires or, or whatever. So I'm just going to go through and just make sure everything is stuck down. The adhesive seems pretty good. So I have roughly 70 LEDs per strip here. So that gives me a total of 280 LEDs here. So this is kind of like having three tubes in one fixture which is kind of what I was thinking would be the advantage here. You can pack more light into the same size fixture if you really wanted to. So now we need to get some power to this thing. So now we need to get some power to these LEDs. They run off of DC power, so you need a power supply for them. Um, this is the previous one I've made. I just attached a power supply with some zip ties to the top side of the fixture, and I got a bigger power supply so I can run both these fixtures off of the one power supply and maybe a few other smaller things throughout the shop. You can also reuse a laptop power supply, for instance, or a computer power supply. Anything like that will work. This one here was $13, so I don't know, it's not that bad, I guess. So I'm gonna hook this thing up to the power supply while it's down here. That way, if something doesn't work for a reason, it's a little easier to troubleshoot and diagnose down here than up in the ceiling. And also on here, I reused the old power cord from the fixture to power the power supply. So now I'm gonna flip this thing over and plug in the power supply and we'll see if it works. Ugh. Don't look directly at it. Yeah, that works. And they're both running. So if I flip this over. Got some light. So just for comparison's sake, there's the replacement tubes versus the light strips. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but the light strips are brighter. Only because there's more LEDs there. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, that's bright. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really bright. So the biggest difference between these LED lights and the fluorescent tubes I have in my shop is that the LEDs are directional. They're only really directing light downward, whereas with a uh, fluorescent tube, it's directing light out in 360 degrees all the way around the whole tube. So the light coming directly off of the tubes is much more diffused than the light coming off of the LEDs. But um, that's not too bad. I could put a diffuser over there. Um, I'll have to look into that a little more and find one that's gonna work pretty well to keep the color balance correct. But um, certainly an option. It's really, really bright over here. And if I close my eyes, I can see strips of light because I keep looking at them. <laughs>
But one of the things I'm most excited about for this is not actually for these things here, but it's to actually put lighting in some very uh, unique spots, I guess, throughout the shop. So how about some light at the bandsaw to make it a little bit easier to see your cut lines when you're cutting? You can see I already have some lamps here that kind of serve that purpose, but I was thinking why not put some light strips on the underside here of the top part of the bandsaw and I'll cast light directly down to the table and make it really easy to see those cut lines. I think up here I'm going to start with just two strips for now. I have no idea how much light I'm actually going to need here. So that's a lot of light. That's only just the two strips in there. I think that's going to be awesome. That's a fantastic change. Uh, one thing that I'm going to add whenever I find them is I do have some switches as well as some plugs so I can um, put a switch on here so I can turn the light off when I'm not using it and a plug so I can unplug it from the power supply when I want to move the bandsaw. But that's a pretty good proof of concept. I think there's a lot of places you could put uh, lights like this. I'm thinking like the underside of a drill press would be a great place for that as well. I'm sure there's a lot of little spots throughout the shop that this might be beneficial. So how about cost effectiveness? I think these retrofit tubes is probably going to be the cheapest way to go. These are about 12 bucks a piece, so for about $24, you can retrofit a two bulb fixture with these things. Um, the setup I have here, the spool of LEDs is $25, and then the power supply is or was $13. So a little bit more than retrofitting one of these things with one of these. <laughs> Uh, that's probably around the same cost as a new fixture, but the added benefit here is you can pack more LEDs into the same size fixture so you can have a little more of a higher output. Now the nice thing about these LED strips is you can put them pretty much anywhere throughout the shop so you can make your own custom lighting, uh, really low profile lighting. So definitely a lot of possibilities. Of course, throughout the shop you can do some weird stuff like putting lights on a bandsaw. <laughs> or whatever. But thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.